The Eye of the Sahara To this day, geologists are still arguing about what could have caused the formation of such a distinct pattern on the Earth's surface. However, the CIA claims that no anomaly was found on the ground and that such a relief was naturally created. Some believe the information was classified to prevent widespread panic, while others believe the CIA discovered evidence of extraterrestrial activities or technology. What is the mystery of the Eye of the Sahara? And what is the CIA actually hiding from us? Let's find out together. For a time, geologists believed the Eye of the Sahara was an impact crater, but they didn't locate enough molten rock to support that theory. Current theories claim that the narrative behind this unique natural structure is significantly more convoluted. The eye's main ring structure is the eroded remains of what was once a dome of Earth's crust layers. Scientists are still puzzled by the eye of the Sahara, but two Canadian geologists have a working explanation for how it formed. They believe that the formation of the eye began over 100 million years ago when plate tectonics drove apart the supercontinent Pangaea, separating what is now Africa and South America. Molten rock surged to the surface, but did not make it all the way, forming a dome of rock layers resembling a giant pimple. This caused fault lines to circle and traverse the eye. The molten rock also dissolved limestone at the eye's core, which collapsed to form breccia, a type of rock. The eye erupted furiously about 100 million years ago. This partially collapsed the bubble, and erosion completed the remainder of the work to form the Eye of the Sahara we know today. The rings are composed of various types of rock that disintegrate at varying rates. The wider circle towards the eye's center is a volcanic rock formed during the explosion. So, this theory reads that the subsurface volcanic flow finally forced up the top layers of sandstone and other rocks. As the volcanism subsided, Wind and water erosion began to chip away at the domed rock layers. The area began to settle and collapse, resulting in the roughly circular eye feature. Because so much of the Sahara Desert is an uninterrupted sea of sand, modern astronauts are fond of the eye. The eye is one of the rare breaks in the monotony, and it has now become a significant landmark for them. Some believe that the eye of the Sahara is the ruins of Atlantis, which Plato depicted as concentric rings of sea and land. Some believe Mauritania's Eye of the Sahara harbors the secrets we've long suspected exist. The eye, which spans 14.6 miles, appears to be from another planet. Given Plato's theories on the issue, this amazing building could be the ultimate resting place of millions of Atlanteans. Plato's depictions of Atlantis are epic and mind-boggling, yet many believe he only touched the surface. He portrayed Atlantis as a vast concentric circle creation alternating between land and sea, similar to how the eye appears now. He highlighted that Atlantis was a wealthy, ideal culture that established the foundation for Athenian democracy. Plato said that the land was abundant in gold, silver, copper, precious metals, and jewels. The narrative of Atlantis, initially told by the ancient Egyptians, has all the qualities you'd expect from a civilization that was not only ahead of its time, but also remarkably arrogant, according to Plato. Atlantis was a world leader in academia, architecture, agriculture, technology, diversity, and spiritual empowerment. Its navy and military were unparalleled, and its rulers reigned with absolute authority. It's no surprise that Atlantis collapsed in ways reminiscent of Rome and potentially in ways reminiscent of how the United States could fall. The Atlanteans were defeated by the only force eager to protect the continent, the Athenians, soon after waging an aggressive, unprovoked war against sections of Asia. The gods unleashed severe tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, storms, and floods on the empire of Atlantis amid the conflicts. As if confessing its misdeeds, Atlantis shattered and disappeared into the ocean and desert, never to be seen again. The Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Rishat Structure and Eye of Africa, is located in Mauritania, the Islamic Republic of Northwest Africa, on the Adrar Plateau in the Sahara. This gigantic geologic inverted dome contains rocks and silt from before life on Earth. The Eye of the Sahara is thought to have once been an alien-built airfield, and this notion is so outlandish that ufologists have proposed it. While this theory may appear strange to some, it's not as absurd as the CIA's investigation into the Rishad structure. 
Some formally classified CIA materials on Project Magnet got released half a century after the initial investigation on the structure. However, the report of the Eye of the Sahara abnormalities is only one page long, and several lines are hidden. It asks why the CIA is attempting to conceal knowledge about this arrangement. The CIA also classified the book The Adam and Eve Narrative, published by their former employee, Chan Thomas, adding to the intrigue. However, some people saved electronic copies of the book, allowing us to understand that it considers different eccentric viewpoints on Earth's past, including the account of worldwide floods. According to the book, one of these floods devastated an entire city in the Sahara, surrounded by water. The city was erected in the shape of rings that extended outward, and powerful, warlike, and intelligent people founded it. The city was known as Atlantis. The ancient lost metropolis of Atlantis is said to be located in the Eye of the Sahara. Jimmy Corsetti, a noted researcher and YouTuber from Bright Insight, is one of the most vocal supporters of this hypothesis. Many people believe Plato's stories about Atlantis were parables and that he utilized Atlantis to establish his ideas. Plato's Atlantean story could be compared to James Cameron's Avatar, in which he warns us that corporate greed and bigotry can poison and potentially destroy our civilization. Atlas of Mauritania is the same person as King Atlas, the King of Atlantis, and the name of the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantis is seen on Herodotus' 450 BC map alongside the eye. Atlantis colonized the Egyptians, the first tellers of the Atlantis tale. We learned about Atlantis and its specific location from their ancestors. Plato's relative Solon was an Athenian statesman and poet who traveled to Egypt and firsthand learned about Atlantis. These are the stories that Solon told Plato. In Plato's Critias and Timaeus dialogues, he portrays Atlantis as three alternating zones of water and two of land, which may readily be mapped onto the physical form of the eye we know today. Also, the neighboring mountains with verdant rivers and waterfalls were revered as God's representatives. These mountains were thought to be in the north, where the Eyes Mountains are. The river and water lines throughout the landscape can be seen in satellite photographs of the eye. Furthermore, Plato described the sea to the south of Atlantis and the desert around it, which can also be seen in satellite pictures. The fresh water was thought to flow from the center island of Atlantis, which likewise resides in the center circle of the eye. Meteorological conditions pushed muck throughout the region, which might easily be attributed to a tsunami, one of several parts of the meteorological system that concurrently devastated Atlantis. Mauritania also exports copper and gold, both plentiful throughout the Atlantean Empire. Elephants, among other species, were plentiful on Atlantis, according to Plato, and many elephant bones have been discovered near the eye. Furthermore, black, crimson, and light-colored rocks were said to be embedded throughout the Atlantean territory. This also applies to the eye. Thousands of artifacts have been discovered inside and around the reshot structure. Most are 12,000 years old or older, putting them in the same period as Atlantis. Arrowheads, spears, stone spheres, surfboards, oars, ship hulls, and other things are among them. These relics indicate that the people of Atlantis lived in a watery environment and utilized these tools to their advantage. Interestingly, several artifacts have been discovered in the structure's outermost depressions, but are missing from the innermost ones. This corresponds to Plato's depiction of barracks outside the city walls, handled by spearmen defending the settlement's security. According to legend, Atlantis was a ten-kingdom empire with the island of Atlantis as its capital. Poseidon, the god of the sea, gave birth to five sets of twins, resulting in ten children, each ruling one of the ten kingdoms. It's unusual to have twins. It just so happens that Nigeria, which is relatively near Mauritania, has the highest rate of twin births on the planet. The Eye of the Sahara stands out because it's a round structure divided into concentric rings, similar to Plato's description of Atlantis. Furthermore, the size of the Sahara's eye corresponds to the dimensions of Atlantis, which was reported to spread for 24 kilometers. Moreover, salt residues in the area indicate that there was previously ocean water. Ancient marine species discovered nearby include whales, fish, turtles, crocodiles, and manatees. Skeptics pointed to Plato's works, which depict a utopian state as an island with the eye of the Sahara as a small place on a vast continent. Recent evidence suggests that the Eye of the Sahara was once an island around 7,000 years ago, when all of Northwest Africa was separated from the mainland by the ancient Tamanrasset River. 
which flowed from the Atlas Mountains through the present-day Sahara Desert to the sea in Mauritania. Elephant skeletons discovered in Mauritania corroborate the hypothesis that the Sahara initially supported a robust population of these animals, standard in Atlantis. The fact that they are now entirely extinct in North Africa lends credence to the theory that this terrible disaster wiped out the residents of this mythical city. Aside from the elephant skeletons, white, black, and red stones discovered in Wadi El Natron, near the Rishat buildings, provide more evidence of Atlantis. Plato's treatise claims that Atlantis had dwellings fashioned of the same stones and that the city was rich in iron, copper, and gold. Today, Mauritania exports the same things, indicating that the region formerly supported a prosperous civilization. A map drawn by the Roman geographer Pomponius Mela, who lived 2,000 years ago, is one of the most significant pieces of evidence in favor of the hypothesis that Atlantis was located in the Sahara. A closer examination of the map indicates that Pomponius wrote Atlante in the Western Sahara, implying that it was a city rather than mountains. This is because, if it were mountains, the inscription would be above them rather than next to them, and it would be inscribed in enormous characters, as it is in all the other towns. Thanks for watching. Please share your ideas in the comments section below.